1918, roughly one year after he started serializing his novel Mujang, Yi Guangzhou published a short essay in Tianan Sun's edited magazine, Chengchen. The essay was titled Tanyang Chengqingyun on the centrality of children, and in impassioned prose, he called for the displacement of parents and ancestors from their traditional pedestal, and for the relocation of children to Korea's center. Redefining filial piety, he accused those outdated practices, for example, long mourning periods and exaggerated parental reverence, of depleting valuable time and resources. We must feast on our parents' blood and flesh, he cried, and if need be, destroy the graves of our ancestors. On the centrality of children is by no means a radical departure from the beliefs that Iwang Su, is, that Iwang Su espoused in other essays from this period, in which he decried Korea's outdated Confucian practices. In fact, the essay echoes many of the prominent discourses of its time, namely the critique of Korea's obsolete cultural practices and the visions of progress and modernity projected through a social Darwinist prism. What the centrality of children does do, however, is underscore the new role that the child as a social construct plays in the cultural imagination of this period. It draws our attention to the social and political values being inscribed onto this white slate, a child, and begs the following questions. Under what circumstances did children's literature appear in Korea? In what, way, in what ways uh, does the magazine Tonyeon contribute to our understanding of colonial Korea? And what kind of opportunity does the transgression framework offer for reading these materials? What kind of discourses are being uh, put forward here? So Chen famously opened um, most of this one issues with the following pronounce, uh, pronouncement. Let us make our great nation, Lehan, into a nation of youth, Sunyang. In order to realize this goal, let us educate and reform our youth so that they may bear that responsibility. So we have a great nation, Lehan, we have the new Korean child, the Xinjiang Sunyang, and guidance to with all the elements needed to cultivate a new generation of national subjects. However, a closer look at the prose and illustrations of the magazine suggests a more ambiguous reconciliation of social Darwinism and nationalism that Che is grappling with as Korea stands on the brink of colonial subjection. I'm trying to gauge not what childhood or children really were like in the early decades of the 20th century, but how contemporary discourse, specifically social Darwinism and budding nationalism, constrained by encroaching colonialism, worked to shape young subjects. We can see how this early magazine with its poetry, folk tales, travel essays, translated fiction, and other educational essays, alongside illustrations, photographs, and other design conventions, would have been highly entertaining. However, considering that it appeared in 1908 when many of Korea's children would have had little access to education, Sonia did not simply respond to a perceived demand for distraction among young readers. Rather, it defined a new kind of reader. This reader's youth placed him in a privileged position to carry Korea out of its dark and stagnant past into a glorious, politically viable future. But to do so, the young reader needed specific knowledge, and the magazine Sonia saw itself responsible for supplying the modern knowledge that was going to be necessary to achieve this goal.